and welcome to a World of Worship Blitz video. Um, last video or one of the previous videos, I'm not sure what I'm going to be publishing. I looked at tier six. I looked at cruises from the perspective of tier six um, tech tree cruises. So a lot of questions around which tech tree line should I grind and um, I went through the cruises and gave you my opinion based on the tier six because the tier six really represents the major change in meta for um, a lot of the lines and a tier six if you're good at tier six chances are you'll carry on down through the line um today we're going to be looking at something a bit different today well not really that different at all all we're going to do is go across one class and look at battleships um again we're going to look at tier six battleships um it's not quite as straightforward because battleship lines can tend to go a little bit more all over the place some are extremely consistent some are extremely inconsistent but what we're going to do anyway is step through all the lines. I'll check that I've got all the tier 6 um, battleships. I suspect that I may be missing the French battleship there. Um, let me just go and cross and have a look. No, we've still got the Normandy. So generally what I do is I tell sell tier 5s and below. If I want to do a video, I just buy it back. Um, they're cheap enough at tier 5. At tier 6 it starts to hurt a little bit. And tier 7s I definitely hang on to. Unless unless I really, really, really dislike them. And there is one or two tier 7s that are gone. But we won't go into that. Um, so probably the first point of call. Let's look at a battleship rather than a cruiser. As we're talking about battleships. First point of call is that these are my opinion. Um, that it's often the case that when a ship gels for you. You'll do better in that ship than the stats in that ship would suggest. So... I do a lot better in the Leander against battleships than I would, for example, in um, something like um, the Pensacola or the Bajoni. Because simply because it's my style of ship, I know how to play it really well. Um, I'll take a Fiji into an all battleship game. Um, probably I should take a Shores into an all battleship game, but I'd probably do better in the Fiji because I know better how, how to evade rather than remain at range. I tend to like to grab caps, so... For example, in those sorts of games, I will sort of take on the role of a destroyer if there's no destroyer. If there's, and, you know, so so essentially what it means is that my style of play um, enhances my capability with the ship. So when I say the ship's good, the other thing you need to consider is what is your style of play, right? So let's run through the lines really, really quickly. So the New Mexico, the American battleships. Now, this is not my favorite line, but it's probably one of the lines that I'd recommend for new players. They are really, really consistent. So starting at Tier 3 with the South Carolina and moving all the way through to the Tier 7 with the Colorado, they are just slow, heavily armed, well-protected ships. It does change a little bit with the North Carolina, which becomes a bit faster and the dispersion maybe not quite so good. Um, the North Carolina is the favourite for a lot of players and is a very capable battleship when played well. It is fast and the Missouri is fast, so they essentially go from slow, heavily armed lumbering hulks to fast, heavily armed lumbering hulks with a little bit less armour. So at low levels, um, these ships are very, very um, forgiving. You, they can take a lot of punishment. They have really high torpedo protection. For a new player, they're a fantastic place to start. But just don't become accustomed. Um, one of the problems you're going to face as a new player is that um, agility is important in this game. Steering is important. You are able to dodge torpedoes in the battleship. Take it from me. Um, but these ships are not the ships to learn those skills in. So from my perspective, it's a good starting line. But just be aware. Don't become reliant on it. If you compare other battleships to the forgiving nature of these ships, you'll struggle to get other lines going, and other lines have a really, really great ships. Another early line is the um, is the Japanese battleship. So when I first started playing the game, I think there were um, the American battleships and the Japanese battleships were the only lines in the game from memory. Um, I remember when the German battleships joined in, and yeah, it's all taken off from there. So the Japanese battleship line, um, I've done a video a couple of days ago around the Congo, or probably weeks ago, days ago, whatever. Um, really good ship. What I find with the um, Japanese line is it tends to go all over the place. Um, from a personal perspective, it goes good, bad, good, bad, good, bad sort of thing. Um, I like the Amagi. Other people don't like the Amagi at Tier 8. I found the Nagato at Tier 7 not quite my thing, even though I thought it would be, but other people find it's okay. 
the Fuso wasn't my thing, too slow for me, not well enough armoured, but great guns, um, a lot of people do extremely well in the Fuso, so um, you go from the fast Congo with a small number of guns to the slow Fuso with its large number of guns through the Nagato, which has moderate speed and a small number of guns, through to the lightly armoured but um, heavy hitting guns on the Amagi with its high speed and it just goes back and forth. Um, and then you get the Izumo and things take a real nosedive before you get to the Yamato where things pick up again. So the Japanese line is a mixture of contrasts, if that's actually a term. So we'll just go through the lines in the order in which they appeared in the game. Um, the Bayern, the German battleship line is a popular line. It's not one I recommend. The Bayern for many players is the pinnacle. I would probably say that the um, so the lower tier ships were awful for, for playing. The three, the Nassau, was horrible. The Kaiser, the Koenig, I really struggled with them. Their guns are illogical. It's hard to get good broadsides. You end up, um, you know, it's hard to get good guns on target. You spend all your time trying to manage your turrets with your steering, and it's just they're just hard ships, right? Especially the Koenig at tier four. Um, it sort of comes right a little bit with the um, Bayern, but the problem is, is the dispersion is shocking on these ships. So they really struggle to hit things. So they have good hard hitting AP, but in the game, you really, um, you know, it's not a battleship on battleship game, if that makes sense. So the battleships there are to anchor the push, but battleships are, um, if all you can do is attack battleships, it does mean that you're sort of limited in your usefulness in the game. So the Bayern played well can be an extremely effective ship. Its HE isn't that great. It really struggles against destroyers as a result because you're unlikely to switch to HE and if you do and use it against a larger target you'll be punished for it because it won't do a lot of damage. Great AP, it's got great secondaries but the secondaries are too short range to really be much of a threat and they don't hit hard enough. The Gneiser now, um, this ship's also very slow, they're very slow up to tier 6. The Gneiser now at tier 7 is fast but it's very long, very large, it's torpedo magnet, it doesn't have a lot of guns and the Bismarck at tier 8 well, the Bismarck is probably one of my most played ships, but the Bismarck is, um, what's the right, you spend a lot of games playing ordinary games in the Bismarck for one or two real beautiful stunning games. Um, and those stunning games are becoming less and less um, common as more and more battleship lines get into the game and it gets driven further and further into the corner. I wouldn't recommend going past tier, tier 8. Um, the... Um, the Gross Kerfurst was the first tier 9 that I'd unlocked from a research perspective, and I've never bought it. Um, so really, it falls off the meta pretty badly. Tier 8, it struggles. It struggles badly. The Turpets is probably one step worse. The Turpets can have the most amazing games ever, but they are extremely, extremely rare. Um, unfortunately for the Turpets, it really suffers. It's got all the problems with the Bismarck, but it has no cam. The camo can't even tighten up that dispersion, so... Um, yeah, the Tirpitz is, you know, they're, they've got historical significance. They can be fun, but often they are not. So the German line, you know, you take your chances. The French line is really characterized by a whole lot of really ordinary battleships up until tier 10, where it's the best battleship in the game. If you're prepared to grind through there, that's great. But um, I've found that my personal opinion of the French battleship line is that it's not too bad. I enjoy a bit more speed, I enjoy a bit more agility. Um, just be aware though that they are poorly armoured, and if I'm in a Fiji, I will happily citadel these um, French battleships. So if I see a French battleship and I'm in a Fiji, that's my priority target, because I know I can get my guns, those tiny 6-inch guns, through the armour of this thing into the citadel. So just be aware that they are generally poorly armoured. The gun layouts, um, I find the gun layouts on the um, French battleships to be somewhat questionable. This is a great example. It's got no super firing guns, so in order to get good guns on target, you're showing a bit of broadside. The Algerie is a bit better. The, um, the Gascon with one turret at the front, one turret at the rear. Well, it's sort of more the general battleship meta with half at the front, half at the rear. Instead of super firing, they're all on the same turret, but still... Um, it's a weird turret layout from the point of view that um, you lose uh, a turret and you've lost your entire firepower. So um, a little bit faster than your average on the on you know the same tier is basically the way the French battleships go. But I find that the turret arrangements and the armor let it down. Definitely not recommended for newer players. Um, 
because you will find that you can't anchor much in these ships and you have to learn how to anchor if you spend all your game running around the edges trying to stay alive um, you'll find the game will become quite frustrating for you so I definitely recommend if you're a new player get in there get in close get in personal take the hits be support for your team and then learn how to survive from that position right the next battleship we're going to look at is the Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth is the um, essentially the equivalent of the War Sprite, which is the premium version. The War Sprite has better stats all round, but the Queen Elizabeth isn't a bad ship. And for a tech tree line, the British battleship is actually a good line from my perspective. So a tier four with the Orion, tier five with the um, whatever the tier five is. Um, I'm really worried about that now. The tier five being the um, Iron Duke. These are really great ships. The Queen Elizabeth isn't quite the same monster as, as the Iron Duke is, but that's because the Iron Duke is such a savage beast. So, um, yeah, the Queen Elizabeth's a good ship. They fire good HE. So you actually have a little bit more uh, cross... Um, cross uh, target capability so often I've got a HE loaded which means the destroyer comes off of port beam and then you can just basically bam deal with it um, so I like these ships the armor isn't great but you can tank by holding your nose in um, to a certain degree uh, secondaries are ordinary but um, you know not not bad um, they're not the great secondaries of the Germans they're not the um, pathetic secondaries, for example, of the Japanese. Um, right, so, yeah, so the British Battleship is a good line to go up through, actually. Just be aware that um, it's not quite as forgiving if you get out of position. Right, the final line that has tech tree battleships that I'll talk about is the Russian line. I haven't got the Russian line all the way through to tier 8. All the other lines I've got through to tier 8. The Russian line I haven't got through to tier 8. And I think I'm probably going to give up at tier 7. And that probably tells you what you need to know about the line from my perspective. So basically, it just doesn't seem to have the armor. The guns have a really slow reload. And they don't seem to have the accuracy. That um, So essentially, it just feels like they're a little bit off game. They, are, they don't have historical significance like the Gneiser now or the Bismarck, so you can't sort of talk yourself into getting into them. Um, maybe I've heard the Vladivostok isn't too bad, but um, you know that's a little bit like the French problem, isn't it, where you've got a whole line of battleships and then right at the end you have something that starts to come right. That's my sense with these ships. Maybe they'll maybe once I get into the Vladivostok, if I ever get there, my thoughts will change, but... Um, Certainly, uh, the Russian line is one that I would approach with caution. Um, so those are the tech tree lines for battleships. Not as many battleship tech tree lines as cruisers. Um, I believe there may be more hopefully coming out at some point. I mean, in the PC version, I think there are um, there's an Italian battleship line. And generally what tends to happen in the Blitz game is I think that they a lot of the work, a lot of the icebreaker work is done at the level of um, the PC version of the game and then ported over to the Blitz version, although the Blitz version is a completely different game. I think a lot of the models may be reusable, or at least the basis for the models. So there we go, Battleship Lines. Um, definitely if you're a new player, probably the um, American line. Um, otherwise the Japanese or the British line is close seconds the German line if you're really into that sort of thing but um, I'd approach with caution the French and the um, Soviet lines I would probably leave till last with the Soviet becoming coming definitely in last place hopefully you found that useful or interesting um, comment below let me know um, if this is helpful or not helpful you're welcome to tell me that I'm wrong because probably I am because don't forget the player is more important than the ship and that's ultimately the most important thing. So catch you next time.